found making its home through most of North America and even parts of Central America, this boldly marked polka dot bird is a pretty odd character. Unlike most woodpeckers, northern flickers aren't resident birds. As the cooler, shorter days approach, they prefer to head a little more south for the winter. This means that if you are in their range, you could get to see these cool-looking feathered beings over fall. Don't expect to find them on a tree hammering away though, as you would other woodpeckers. Instead, look to the ground. Flickers don't really have the usual diet a woodpecker has, of eating mainly wood-boring beetle larvae. These guys prefer ants, and lots of them. When compared with other birds, the polka dot woodpecker probably eats ants more frequently than any other North American bird. Most birds avoid these insects likely due to their stings or the noxious chemicals they contain, such as formic acid. All woodpeckers can eat them, though northern flickers simply just can't pass up on an opportunity to get in on this delicacy. They are the right bird for the job since they are perfectly equipped for getting at ants, largely thanks to that very long tongue. It is so long that it wraps around the bird's skull, ending near the rear of its eye sockets, which is the case for most woodpeckers. But the northern flicker's tongue is extra long, extending two to three inches past the tip of its beak. Due to this extension, flickers can reach far down into the ground for ants, capturing them with a tongue that has barbs and a flattened tip, along with the help of very large salivary glands. The perfect sticky trap an ant-eating bird like a northern flicker would need in order to successfully lap up its prey. So, while harries and other woodpeckers are banging their noggins on trees for beetles, Flickers are on the ground, ant hills, along the side of quiet country roads, wooded clearings, gardens, and even walkways, gleefully dining on ants. Basically, if you have an ant problem, you're probably going to want to have these birds around. Doing things as simple as keeping a fresh bird bath, offering soot, or putting out apples and peanut butter or even raisins may bring you a bold-colored, beautiful northern flicker. As they enjoy the treats you offer, they are bound to catch a glimpse of any ants around and will happily go to work. They do eat other insects too, but the bulk is ants, nearly 50%. They really, really love them, as one was seen lapping up 5,000 in just one sitting. But I guess since ants are really small and flickers pretty large, they would have to eat a lot. The time of year they truly gorge on them is over the breeding season, during which even their young are raised up on ants and their larvae and not much else. As many as 50 trips can be made throughout the day between both parents. A lot of ants are being consumed, which is good for the ecosystem. It's a delicate balance in which northern flickers play their own role. If it wasn't for the fact that ants retreat much lower down into the ground over winter, they would likely continue to eat them over the cold season. Their love for these critters goes beyond diet, as they also very much enjoy rubbing them on their feathers, something known as anting. This isn't unique to flickers, as many birds do this, like this crow here. It's thought that the formic acid in ants helps birds treat irritation and protect them from parasites. Off the ant topic, one other really awesome thing about these birds that benefit humans is the fact they also love the larvae of corn borer moth, a pretty bad pest for the agricultural sector, which in the U.S. is responsible for more than a billion dollars a year due to crop losses. Unlike ants, these insects can be eaten over winter. So the northern flicker is a pretty good woodpecker to have around, and they are just so dear. I love them. There is so much more about these handsome birds. If you would like to learn more, check out this full overview I did on them last year. I hope you enjoyed the video. Happy birding!